week. I'm really excited and I've got a lot of stuff for you and I'm trying to not go too long here. Um, but I've got what I think is a real game changer for so many of us and that is sugar. Okay, now give me a thumbs up. For those of you watching right now, if you can honestly say you've had a sugar addiction, you're experiencing a sugar addiction, you know what that feels like, you know, you, you eat sugar, you want more sugar, you're like overwhelmed by it. Yeah, right? Okay, because it's highly addictive. And, and the topic tonight, today, right now, <laughs> um, is breaking the sugar addiction, uh, and it's a combination of three things. I'm going to go through, yeah, right, I'm going to go through those three things with you and then give you some strategies that you can implement. Now, there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm just getting your thumbs up now, uh, but I think we can all relate to this, right? Um, sugar is highly addictive, and in fact, last session, if you were with us, we talked about that study with rats that looked at rats um, and cocaine and they found that sugar was more addictive for rats than cocaine and when they tried to stop sugar so they took the sugar away from the rats they experienced real life withdrawal symptoms so we all know what that feels like to be feeling like you're addicted to sugar and you try to uh, go off it you feel tired you feel lethargic you might feel grumpy um, because there's some science behind it so I've got something I wanted to show you here and it is this um, it's a PET scan. Now I know when we do a Facebook Live, things will um, they will be opposite, but you can basically see um, the main thing here. We've got cocaine uh, over here, and we've got sugar over here, and you can see that they basically light up the same parts of the brain, and that's because there's a surge of feel-good brain chemicals like dopamine and serotonin, and and that's the same for both uh, a drug like cocaine and for sugar, and just like a drug, your body craves more after you get that initial high. So really interesting, uh, really interesting stuff here. Okay, so what happens when we eat sugar? Basically, sugar, um, say you eat, you know, you drink, you drink some juice or you might have some white bread or some white, white rice, and it's really a simple carbohydrate, which means there's nothing holding it back. So there's no protein, there's no fiber in that, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but basically this quick di digestion causes that um, blood sugar within our body to rise. And once our blood sugar rises, the pancreas has to pump out insulin. Now remember that word insulin, because we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but the insulin, um, pushes the sugar into our cells. And once that happens, the blood sugar crashes. So you know what that feels like when, say, you eat a really big pasta meal, and then right away you feel tired. And that's that surge, and then it's that crash, okay? Then what happens is the adrenal glands kick in because they gotta get that blood sugar back up. And so once they do, the cycle starts again. So the result is we feel tired, we hunger, we're hungry, we want more sugar. It's that, it's that cycle of, of eating, crashing, craving, eating, crashing, craving, um, which is really important to realize, right? Because it's it's awareness. As, as we go through uh, and learn more about ourselves, it's interesting to see the effects that food have on our system. In fact, when you're eating a food, you're going to know if you're sensitive to it or if you've had too much, say, um, um, sugar because you're going to feel tired after. And it's important to note that because every person's going to be different. Um, why do we care about this? Okay, why do we care if we have too much sugar? We care because too much sugar is obviously bad for our health. It can affect our health. Um, it's been linked to an increased risk of heart disease, uh, diabetes, cancer, aging, acne, and it causes inflammation in our body. And when, when our body is inflamed, we're more at risk for other diseases. So that's why, number one, it's important. But number two, it makes us gain weight. Okay, it makes us gain weight. And I know this firsthand, and some of you may have heard me tell this story before, um, but I realized this uh, when I was a journalism student in Toronto. And like anyone doing, you know, working on a degree, there's so much going on. You're you're in group work, um, you're busy, you're, you're, you're working, and I was working basically, and not full-time, but, but a lot of hours in the athletic department where I was leading fitness classes, personal training, I was doing seminars, kind of like what I'm doing now, which, which is really funny. Um, but what happened was I noticed that something was happening, and something was happening, and I was actually gaining weight. So I was gaining inches and I couldn't figure it out because I was really active and it was a post-grad degree. So I'd learned, you know, gone through the, the freshman 15 back in university. So I kind of knew what foods to stay away from. I was doing my own meal plan, but I was gaining weight. So I started to journal about this because I really wanted to figure out, you know, what, 
what's happening? And what I discovered was I had this little habit and the little habit was on my way to one class, I would stop for lunch at the bookstore and I would get what I was eating then was cottage cheese and Melba toast. But I was, in addition to that, I was picking up one licorice, okay, one licorice. But every day I was having that licorice and as time went on and exams came and things got more stressful, that one licorice turned to you know three and then all of a sudden you're buying for a group and everybody's eating out of a, out of a bag. Um, and what I didn't realize then is that three um, sticks of licorice, strings of licorice, 21 grams of sugar, okay? 21 grams of sugar. And we know the World Health Organization, you've heard us talk about this before. And if you're new to Buff Mom, um, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but the recommended daily dose is about 24 to 25 grams of added sugar per day for women. So in me having those three or four pieces of licorice, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize how much sugar I was taking in. And it was a habit, and we know that habits create our results, right? So I was doing this at least five days a week, and I noticed that things changed when it was new semester, and all of a sudden I wasn't walking by that bookstore anymore, and then within three weeks my weight returned to normal. That's how much of an impact sugar has on us. So that's why it's important to go, and it's not just things like candy, it's, it's things that impact our insulin. So white bread, white rice, white flour, anything processed still acts the same way in our body, and we'll talk a little bit about that. I wanna show you this graph, um, we talked about this in one of our sessions before, and I know things are reversed, but you can see that there has been a 700% increase in added sugar consumption since 1915, okay? So in 1915, each person consumed about 17.5 grams of sugar, okay? Now in 2011, now remember, this is 2019, 2011, that number was 150 pounds of sugar, okay? So that just shows how much our sugar consumption as a society is going up. Now, I wanted to get some Canadian statistics for you and just see what was interesting in our country. And I did find something interesting, interesting and it showed that the lowest um, sugar consumption was for women aged 71 and older. Yeah, they only had about 20 teaspoons. But the highest amount of sugar consumption, does anybody know what that is? I know we're on a little bit of a delay. It was teenaged boys aged 14 to 18, okay? They had the most, they consumed the most amount of sugar, and I think it was 172 grams of sugar a day, okay? Now, I want to show you an example of soda, how it's changed over the years, okay? So here is Coca-Cola, and this is actually from their website. And when we started back here, I'm reversed, so uh, there. That was, I think it was 6.5 ounces. Then they went in 1955 to the king size, which was only about 11 ounces or so. And now, you know what we're at? 42 ounces, okay? From 6.5 to 42 ounces. And we know serving sizes have changed, but oh my goodness, doesn't that make such a difference, right? That's what we're consuming. That's what we're getting used to consuming. Uh, the serving sizes are really changing. So I wanted to show you that. Um, and in, an interesting note on soda, by the way, I came across another study, and it looked at over 100,000 men and women over 20 years, and they were divided into two groups. And one group, they just did what they were normally doing. But the second group, researchers wanted them to specifically drink one can of soda a day over the course of 20 years. So an extra soda over the course of 20 years. The other group didn't change anything, and what they found was by just adding in one can of soda every day, you gain one pound every four years, okay? That's with nothing else, like not changing your food, not, not just one pound, of, one can of soda. And then over 20 years, that really added up. So it shows you um, the impact that sugar can have on our results. Now, I want to get on to those three things that we were going to talk about, uh, the cause of some of the sugar addiction. But I wanted to tell you first that you may or may not know this. There's at least 61 code names for sugar. Okay, so when you're reading a label, it gets a little bit difficult because you're not sure what sugar not what's not sugar. Some of the common ones, fructose, we know that, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup, dextrose, maltose, lactose, cane sugar, corn sugar, fruit juice concentrate, um, there's corn sweetener, there's invert sugar, 
Uh, it it just, just goes on and on. And I'll get to sugar, alcohols, and artificial sweeteners in a moment. But when you're looking, just, just really ask yourself when you're reading a label, okay, does that look like it's got sugar on it? Or does that, does that look like it's another form of sugar? And you can always give a quick Google, but if you want the full list, just Google in, you know, names for sugars and you've got it on hand so you know what to look for, especially when you're looking at, at your kids' food, okay? So our topic today is breaking the sugar combination, breaking the sugar addiction cycle is a combination of three things. I'm going to go through those three things with you. Plus, I'm going to talk about some science-based strategies to help you get control and break the cycle, okay? Now, the first one uh, is really interesting. I really found this interesting, and I wanted to share with you. So there's a book called The Obesity Code, and we're probably going to be inverted here. It's called The Obesity Code, and it's by Dr. Jason Fung, who, by the way, is a Canadian. He's a kidney doctor in Toronto. It's an excellent read for someone who likes the science stuff behind this. Um, and he made an excellent argument for obesity, um, weight gain having little to do with calories in versus calories out, and you know, counting your calories. And he says it's more about hormones I think we kind of known this is it's about hormones but more specifically insulin so the more insulin we have in our body at a given time it dictates whether we can or cannot ta tap into those uh, fat stores okay so the more insulin we have the more off balance things are going to be and the less likely we are actually virtually impossible as he discusses in this uh, in this book to lose weight okay so the goal according to him is to keep those insulin levels low now, you can probably imagine all foods trigger insulin. We know that. Uh, we've talked about the glycemic index before. There's also an insulin index. Glycemic index is a measure of the carbohydrates effect on blood sugar. Insulin level, um, the insulin list is very, very interesting, and it's about other foods like proteins and fats, okay? And, and he says, you know, all foods trigger insulin obviously, but there are some foods that trigger insulin more. Anybody know what that, what those foods are? It's, I'll give you a hint, it's the topic of what we're talking about today, it's sugar, okay? So a very, very interesting read, I'm gonna just show you that again, it's the obesity code, and Dr. Fung does a terrific job of breaking this down and explaining the science. He also talks about, um, intermittent fasting as well because that's becoming more popular and he shows some of the science behind it. it's a small part of his book it's towards the end but if you're interested in any of those things make sure you check out that book okay now um, insulin release it just isn't about the sugar as we talked about it's things like the white bread white flowers highly processed that where everything is stripped out and it goes right into the bloodstream and boom our blood sugar is all off okay now as you know um the world health organization we just talked about that the recommendation and i mentioned this before i got into my personal story about licorice is about 20 to 25 grams of sugar per day for women that's added sugar okay um Dr. Fung says no added sugar. His thing is absolutely not. Like that destroys insulin levels. You are not going to lose weight. And I look back into the archives of one of the Buff Mom Coach Lives we did when we used to do this sort of thing before Facebook and we used to do it on teleconference. And I was telling people nine grams of sugar back then. Okay, so you've got a lot of information here. You've got to think about what works best for you, but the lower the added sugar, the better your results, okay? Um, number two of the causes behind this sugar addiction is processed foods, okay? You've probably figured out now that almost everything in a package has sugar, okay? Almost everything. Even if it's telling you zero grams, if it's a car carbohydrate, carbohydrates turn into sugar in our systems. But what we're concerned with is the added sugar, so the sugar that's put in on top of those natural grams of sugar, okay? So I've got some examples for you. And I wanted to show you of some things that you, you may not realize, and I've got a lot of stuff here on my desk, but I picked some that, you know, look healthy. So this is Activa, and you've got to look at marketing. So this looks, you know, it looks healthy. It's telling you there's a probiotic, which all yogurts are probiotic anyway. Um, it's letting you know there's a challenge that you can join to see if the probiotic works for you. Um, interestingly, this has three, okay, three quarter cup serving has five grams of fat, okay, um, and it has seven grams of protein only, but it has 15 grams of sugar. Now, I want you to see 
what 15 grams of sugar looks like, and this is in your yogurt, okay? So I got this. Okay, that's 15 grams of sugar right here. I measured out 15 grams of table sugar. So that is what's in this yogurt here, okay? So you've really got to read those labels. Now, moving on, I've got the yogurt here. I've taken something that you probably are going to think there's a lot of sugar in. So these are these real gummies, but the reason I picked these is because they're marketed so healthful, okay? So you look and it says, free of artificial colors and flavors. You know, you might pick these up for your kids. You might be on the plane and you wanna give them something. Um, you, you might pick these up because they're in the store there to get. Um, interesting, there's only eight candies, okay? So eight, you know how big those are? There's 21 grams of sugar, okay? So I wanna show you. So that's 21 grams of sugar right here, okay? I'm gonna pour it in so you can see. Now just think, if you've had the yogurt and then you have a couple of those, how quickly we're adding to that sugar. Okay, that's 21 grams of sugar, plus you had the other 15. Look at how much that's adding up. We're already past our 21 grams. Now, the next one, okay, I've got, my husband said, make sure the cups are dry. That's what happens when they're not dry. Okay, next up, okay, next one. So we've got, these guys, okay, and I wanted to show you this. By the way, my teenage son was so excited to see all this stuff I have in this basket. He actually took one of these to school today from my display. But, okay, so this is, again, marketed as healthy, high in protein, a good source of fiber, and iron. You'd think it says protein bar on it, but then you go to the reading, it's 180 calories, okay. It's got three grams of fiber, okay, but only 10 grams of protein and just four, and 14 grams of sugar. 14 grams of sugar in one of these, okay? 14 grams of sugar. Now, here we go, this guy. Here's 14 grams of sugar. Ah, so just think, if you had the protein, you had some yogurt, and then you had some gummies, oh my gosh, we're almost to a third of a cup of sugar already. And that stuff that is that we're told is healthy. That's what's really interesting. Um, also, interestingly, this has 15 grams. I'm gonna talk about sugar in a moment, but this also has 15 grams. So if you're gonna have a workout, what do you, Captain Crunch or this? You know, they're the same amount of sugar. It's really, really interesting. Reading labels can be really helpful. Okay, so we've done that. Now, I wanna look at some simple swaps, and, and we've talked about this before, but if you're new to the program, these little changes really, really add up. So we've got this yogurt that I was talking about. Okay, we said, we said it had 15 grams of sugar. So my next yogurt is going to be this, except I actually purchased the wrong one. So you're still gonna be looking for Greek style yogurt. Ah, someone else was into my props. Okay, so we've got in this only six grams of sugar, but we also have 17 grams of protein. Now, it's important to take note that this is 0% fat. We actually wanna buy foods with fat because it brings down that glycemic index of the food, uh, the rate at which it impacts our blood sugar, and the slower the release, the better. So by adding fat, it's one of those things that can slow that down. So um, the one that you can get, the Liberty, the full fat, I think it's a 3%, the protein is about the same, but the fat is a little bit more and will also keep you feeling full, okay? So still an okay option because there's less sugar in this, but um, keep in mind if you can get the full fat, that would be even better, okay? So the next thing I wanted to show you um, that that's, has sugar in it, we don't even realize, like pasta sauces, added sugar. This one isn't too bad. This one's six grams, but some of them get up to 10 and 12, so you gotta be careful with that. So making your own at home, obviously for this is the best option for you, or you know, adding a little bit of this and then using um, some tomatoes uh, that you've got at home. So adding to this, adding a little bit, because that's only a quarter, a half of a cup, half of a cup that gets you six grams of added sugar, okay? The next one that I have is, I just have to show you this. Again, my teenage son, I love him, but I just, anyway, teenagers, right? We've got 22 grams of sugar in this, but there's two servings, so this is actually 44 grams of sugar right here. So this is more than uh, double the serving, or about, about double the serving of what you should have according to the WHO, and according to Dr. Fung, you know, way too much. Okay, so there's that. I've got a couple more goodies in here uh, for swap outs. So when you're looking for things to drink, water, 
Buff Mom water bottle is great too. Uh, water though um, is the best option or black coffee or black tea or herbal tea or you can do soda uh, in a soda stream if you have a soda stream. Be careful with tonic water. It's loaded with sugar. Club soda is a better choice. Okay, I've got just a couple more things before we move on. Um, this is a good swap, okay? So this is the brand I buy of oatmeal because um, our son has a peanut allergy and this one I know is free of allergens and I actually use this to bake. This is uh, oat flour and all it is is oatmeal ground up and then I use that to bake. But you'll see a difference and the difference is for a third, a third of a cup, there's zero grams of sugar. So you know it's whole grain. There's three grams of fiber. Um, so this is all good stuff, okay? So going for oatmeal, Try to get the gluten-free if you can because sometimes there's cross-contamination. This is going to be easier on your belly if you're looking to, you know, slim that area or have it go down a little bit. You want to really try the gluten-free option is a good, good one for you. And then, of course, the cereal. And I grabbed this because I wanted to show you that um, I know it's Captain Crunch. I've talked about Raisin Bran before. And for those of you just joining us, Raisin Bran is another one full of sugar. Um, but... A, re a study, I just saw it on, it was a Harvard University study found that when a cereal is targeted to kids, there's 40% more sugar in it. Really makes you think. It's just really too bad. 40% more sugar. So uh, go easy on the breakfast cereal. Um, maybe instead of eliminating it, you just take down your serving size. Or you stick to cereals that have three grams or less. I think Cheerios does. And I think the, the sugar, there's, some, uh, there's a cashew cereal that's lower. So if you still want to eat breakfast cereal, three grams or less of added sugar. Okay? All right. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I can just have sugar free and then I won't have sugar, which is an option, absolutely is an option. And um, I remember I used to consume so much Diet Coke at one point and then I don't know what happened. I think I just, it was making me get bloated, I wasn't feeling good and I, I ditched it probably a couple of years ago. Um, but it's a hard one, it's, it's a habit, it's a hard one to, ki to kick because you like that fizziness, right? Um, this may change your mind a little bit. Um, there's been some research you know, showing that artificial sweeteners, and that includes that includes stevia, all forms of artificial sweeteners. I know stevia comes from um, uh, from a plant, but it's still processed depending on where you're getting it from. Um, so University of Miami study done in 2012 found drinking diet soda was associated with 43% more an increased risk of vascular events, so strokes and heart attacks. 43% more. Wow. Other studies have shown evidence uh, that artificial sweeteners have been linked to obesity, metabolic syndrome, strokes, and heart attacks once again. Um, this is interesting with artificial sweeteners, and this is something I just learned, and I think it's, I think it's really cool information because uh, it can really help us control our cravings, and it is this. Artificial sweeteners raise insulin levels. And we know from the beginning of this that we want to keep our insulin levels low. I looked at two studies. I found two studies, um, one done in 2008 and the other done in 2007. I know they're a little bit older, but the research was really good. And both concluded the same thing. A sweet taste equals an insulin release. So even if you're just tasting something, whether it has calories or not, you're releasing insulin. In fact, one of the studies all that was done was the subjects put a sweet liquid in their mouth, rinsed it out, and then spit it out, and insulin was still, it's still increased, okay? So just a note about that with artificial sweeteners. And also, um, this means if you're constantly drinking artificially sweetened beverages or even gum, um, your body's constantly spiking insulin, and when you spike insulin, you drop, you crave, you spike, you drop, you crave. So just something to keep in mind when it when you're wondering about cravings and what you can do. Um, you know, we don't realize how much we're chewing that gum or how much we're drinking that sweetened water, and if it's got artificial sweeteners in it, we might as well just have real water and put in real sweeteners like lemon or put in herbal tea, and we talked about the importance of drinking water last time, our last Facebook Live, okay? and. Something else, there's two more points on artificial sweeteners I wanted to mention, and it is this. It is, they can change your taste buds. So if you're used to getting really sweet stuff all the time, when you have something like fruit or vegetables, it's not going to taste so sweet. 
Even unsweetened applesauce is going to taste bland to you because your taste buds are wanting something more and more sweet. And you just can't compete with those artificial sweeteners because they're so potent and they're so much sweeter than natural sources. The more you do it, the more you're going to notice that. So just something to be aware of. Um, and of course, we have artificial sweeteners linked to weight gain. There was... Um, a study done, it was called the San Antonio, San Antonio Heart Study, and it looked at those who drank 21 diet sodas per week, and they found that they are twice as likely to become overweight or obese as people who did not have diet sodas. Okay, so something to think about, artificial sweeteners, processed foods, and we talked about hormones. Now the third one, okay, it's rare that you're gonna do any program with me that I'm not gonna mention this, and that is mindset, okay? Because I'm sharing this information with you, the science, yes, it's important, but this is even more important, and it's your mind mindset. And, and it comes to things like, if we think we have a sugar addiction, what are we saying to ourselves? Are we saying, I'm addicted to sugar? You know, I have no control over sugar. Um, I'm constantly at the mercy of sugar. What that does, is it belittles ourselves. If we give away our power to something that is not powerful. We are more powerful than that food, but we just don't realize it. So making a conscious effort to make sure we're choosing positive, uplifting language, we're being kind to ourselves, um, we're listening to our bodies, you know, when we actually are hungry, when we're not hungry, if there's a craving there, asking ourselves what's really the emotion behind it, um, remember that a belief is just a thought, thought over and over again. So be careful what you're saying to your friends. You know, I'm addicted to sugar. Oh my gosh, the sugar is getting hold of me. I have no control. Start with your mindset. Start by realizing that language and then taking a few moments to rephrase it. And we're going to do a little bit more of that uh, in the weeks ahead, but rephrasing it and looking at it differently because that is something that makes all the difference in the world. Um, it will, your mindset controls everything. Okay, and when you learn how to do that and you can manage your mind and you can manage your thoughts, there's so many things that can happen, including moving away from sugar and choosing more healthy options. Okay, I'm going to end with some tips that can help you maybe if you're struggling with this. Maybe if you're struggling with some cravings and you are giving away your power. Number one, Okay, the first thing, and you know this is important, you gotta drink your water. Even if you don't like water, I said this last week, you've gotta find a way to like water because the only way you're going to shed inches, uh, and especially the tummy area, is to have enough fluid to wash out those cells. We need water, one ounce per kilogram of body weight at minimum, and you may find you need more. Your urine is pale, not clear. That's what you're looking for. And of course, you want to get enough sleep. Last week, we talked about those two hormones that regulate hunger and satiety. So you want to make sure you're getting enough sleep or that's going to go up. And the one that tells you you're full is going to go down and then you're going to crave more. Um, you want to have healthy fats. Okay, so gone are the days of no fat, low fat. The research is changing. And if you're confused about this, give a Google. It's really changing and it's changed over the last, you know, five, six, even a decade. And we're realizing we need fat. Fat is healthy for us. So we want to have things like olive oil, great monosaturated fat. Um, coconut oil is another good one. Cooking with butter. What some of us don't realize is the smoke point of olive oil is 375. So if you're cooking something in the oven and it's at 400, that's becoming toxic in your food. So cooking with an animal source is more stable. So using butter to cook, you can also use beef tallow to cook, um, but using uh, staying away from the highly processed vegetable oils. So things like safflower, sunflower, they're highly inflammatory and they're rich in omega-6 fatty acids. They highly inflammatory, like too much of it. So you want to stay away from all of that stuff and go back to the basics. Think of how your grandmother or your great grandmother would cook and go back to that because that's actually going to help control those cravings. Avocados are an awesome, awesome source. Um, another point is to increase your fiber. We should be getting about 25 grams as women per day. We're not even coming close. So increasing 
foods like fruits, berries, vegetables, chia seeds, popcorn, not the microwave kind. You can get organic popcorn and cook it on the stove, not in olive oil because it's probably going to be, um, it's not stable, but uh, coconut oil is great to cook uh, popcorn in. And if you get organic, you know it's not genetically modified, you know it's not sprayed, you're not getting those extra chemicals in. Um, so looking for things to increase your fiber, really important. Again, it's going to keep you feeling full. I've got just a couple more. Um, you want to avoid juice. We talked about how juice is just, you know, added sugar. Some of some of it is natural, but oftentimes the juice we're getting, especially in the morning, orange juice is sugar on top of sugar. Instead, go for the fruit where you get the fiber. You know, a glass of orange juice could be about three or four oranges, and we probably wouldn't sit down and eat three or four oranges at once. Maybe you would, but most likely in the morning when you're pressed for time, uh, eating three or four oranges is probably not going to happen. Um, dessert. Going back to old school mentality of fruit for dessert instead of the highly processed um, baked goods. It doesn't mean we can't have them ever, but it's just something to be aware of so we can build those habits even you know during the week and then on the weekend we can enjoy something because we never want to get into restriction mode. We want to be able to enjoy all foods. Um, but dessert, you know, fruit for dessert. Uh, dark chocolate is an awesome choice uh, if you are having a sugar craving, but you want to make sure it's 70% or more uh, cacao. So chocolate comes from the cocoa bean, which isn't uh, processed. It isn't full of sugar. It's what happens to the processing uh, when we turn it into milk chocolate or we turn it into white chocolate that adds the sugar and everything. Also really high in antioxidants. I've got three more for you. Eliminate breakfast cereal if you can, or if you must. We talked about this three or four grams or less of sugar, okay? And then reducing uh, refined grains, so white breads, and actually whole wheat bread, same thing, it's also highly processed, um, and it's the, kind, it's the way that they process these days that strips all of that stuff out. If it's enriched, it means everything good is pulled out and then put back in, so you wanna try to stay away from that as well, okay? And then number nine, no restrictions. Instead, we want to take good care of ourselves. We want to say nice things to ourselves. Um, we want to believe that we can do this, and we want to make these choices, you know, because we care about us, we care about our families, we care about the bigger picture. So really thinking of your emotional why, okay? So that is everything, and I know there's a lot, and I know I'm over time. So what we're going to do if you have questions, okay, we're going to roll that into next Tuesday, our Facebook Live at noon. It's going to be a shorter one, but it's on March break. So if you got questions, um, you can comment them, you can send them to me, but if you want to get them in before Sunday, that'll give me enough time to organize them and get some answers together. And if I want to, if I need to source uh, some resources for you to take your education a little bit further, I can do that as well, okay? So awesome having you with us. So once again, next week, we've got no classes in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, and St. George, but classes in Aberfoyle, Guelph. You're welcome to go there for a bonus class. Just email Courtney at the buffmom.com to let her know you're coming. Okay, so for those of you who are with me tonight, I'll see you soon. Everyone else, we'll talk to you later. Bye, awesome job. Take care, everybody.